Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to prepare hot and cold composite curve uh, manually. Um, this would be very useful, especially when you are doing a pinch analysis involving more than one hot or cold uh, stream. So yeah, uh, let's begin. Uh, before we move on further, it would be very useful if we know, if we get some definition in the context of uh, pinch analysis. So in the context of pinch analysis, what does a stream mean? A stream uh, basically is a flow of material inside a pipe or, you know, inside of a conduit or whatever that requires uh, heating and cooling. And during the process, it does not change in composition. So, you know, when you are having a, a, a material uh, leaving one process unit and then need to go to the other process unit, it will go through a pipe. And then along, it's, uh, I'll say, it's what is flowing from one unit to another unit inside the pipe. There are no changes in a composition, but the stream can be either hot or or cool, so it needs to be heated up or it needs to be cooled down. Now that we have uh, taken care of the definition of a stream, let's go uh, into a, a bit more detail. So what does a cold stream means? Well, cold stream is basically a, a stream that are at low temperature and need to be heated up to their desired uh, temperature. Temperature. So basically, it's a cold, uh, lower temperature to begin with, and then it needs to be heated up uh, to a higher temperature using uh, some kind of like heating medium or, or heating utility. Uh, meanwhile, you have a hot stream, basically the same thing as the cold stream, with exception that it needs to be a cool down. Hot stream begins with a high temperature, need to be cooled down to a lower temperature using a cooling medium or maybe cool, uh, cool utility. Now, when we talk about hot, hot and cold composite curve, where does it drawn uh, in the curve? So it will be drawn on, it will be drawn in the TH uh, diagram, basically a temperature enthalpy diagram. It's not that complicated. Temperature enthalpy diagram is basically a is basically a, a, a plot with temperature on the y-axis. As you can see here, it can be plotted in the unit of Kelvin or Celsius or whatever, whatever. And then on the x-axis, as you can see here, uh, it is the heat flow uh, in kilowatt, BTU per second, BTU per hour, kilojoule per hour, whatever that, whatever unit of heat or energy that you want to uh, represent. So of course we have uh, a few lines inside here, um, which I will explain later. So uh, now that we have, now that we know what is this, what the stream means, hot and cold stream, what does it mean? And then where does the hot and cold composite curve are uh, drawn uh, in? Uh, the next thing that we need to define is what is hot composite curve? So when you are dealing with more than one uh, stream, well, in the industry, when you want to do heat integration, you are dealing more than one stream, maybe two, three, four, five, six. I don't know, but it's more than one generally. And then same goes with the uh, cold stream. It can be more than one uh, cold stream. So a combination of hot stream, of multiple hot stream, uh, into one single curve that represents its temperature and heat flows is called a hot composite uh, curve. A uh, cold composite curve is basically having the same definition, but it involves representing a uh, temperature and heat flow of multiple uh, cold stream into one uh, curve, as you can see in the plot on your bottom right here. So the red one, I define them as a hot composite curve where the arrow here means that it's going down in temperature. Meanwhile, uh, the blue curve here where the arrows are going up or facing up, if you will, uh, or, or the, the arrow generally goes to the higher, from lower to a higher temperature region is, is basically a whole composite curve. All right, next. The next question that we need to ask is how do we prepare one? Okay, first thing first, you need to know what are your stream. That's the first thing. What are your stream? Uh, 
what are your uh, cold stream and then what are your hot stream. So since a hot and cold composite curve can be uh, plotted on the same, I would say on the same uh, diagram, right? But the, the curve is basically, the, the blue curve belongs to the cold stream and then the red curve is belongs to the uh, hot stream. So we do one curve. One, uh, one curve at a time, meaning that one hot, we deal with the hot stream first and later we do a uh, cold stream. Next. Now, in these examples, right, um, I have shown you a uh, three stream. Uh, as you can see, their stream uh, are all facing down in, in terms of like their arrow direction means that they are all cold stream, but we have three cold stream. Now, each of these core stream will have their CP value, big CP. Uh, big CP is basically M multiplied by uh, heat specific heat capacity. So, um, so you have a, yeah, they, they, each stream will have their own temperature, you know, from what temperature that they need to be cooled down. So in this case, uh, the blue line here is a one core stream that originally having a temperature of T2 and need to be cooled down to T5. And this particular stream having a CP of A. Uh, it is basically a number. Now, on the second stream here, I have uh, another cold stream that has temperature of uh, T1 need to be cooled down to T3. And they have a CP value of B. And then I also have another stream uh, originally at T2, need to be cooled down to T4 and they have their CP value equal to C. Now, as I said uh, before, um, you can deal with a multiple stream, multiple uh, cold stream in this case. So, and they all, each stream will have their own CP value because different stream will have their own composition. And, 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 you know, molecular makeup, that's why they have their, as well as their mass flow rate. So that's why they have different CP value. And different stream will also have different temperature value. Uh, they are, they are, will have their own or the, uh, initial temperature and they also have their final temperature that need to be, that, that the final cold temperature that need to be, uh, that, that, that are required. Now, so we have uh, three stream three cold streams. So how can we represent all of these three cold streams into one cold stream composite curve? So it's quite easy. So that, now that we have identified the stream, so that's basically the first step, identify the stream. The next step is basically you draw something like this, where you plot like a, it's not really a curve, just, a, just like a, a initial a plot where on the y-axis here, you have a temperature, you know, just plot everything. Just, just remember all the temperature of your stream, initial and final. Also remember their CP values. So as you can see here, I don't really care what is the, uh, I would say, the, the, the slope of the curve. That does not really matter at this point. But what's really important is your temperature as well as your uh, CP value. I could have just drawn... Uh, where's my arrow here? I could have just drawn this one vertically going down. It's also fine. Doesn't really matter. What matter here is the temperature of the stream going uh going from what temperature need to be cooled down to what temperature and their CP value. That's the first thing. The second thing that you need to do is you're gonna create an intervals of the temperature. So I create a uh, um, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, one, two, three, four, four interval because I have uh, one, two, three, four, five, five temperature. So from T1 to T2, that's the first interval. T2 to, uh, to uh, T3 is the second interval. T3 to T4 is the third interval. T4 to T5 is the fourth interval. So divide them into interval. Now next, um, you're going to calculate what's the the, the heat flow for each interval. So the, the equation is quite simple. It's basically a CP multiplied by temperature difference in that interval. For example, here I have the first interval, delta H1 is basically B uh, is the CP of this particular stream multiplied by 
E1 minus T2. Now, why I only have B here is because on this particular uh, on this particular region or interval, I only have one curve or one stream, if you will, where that one stream only has B uh, uh, CP of B. Next, you do uh, you calculate what's the uh, the heat flow for the second interval. Now, if you analyze the second interval, right, you have one uh, stream, uh, two stream, uh, th three stream in that particular interval. So you add them up. Basically, A plus B plus C multiplied by uh, T2 minus T3. Basically, the interval from here to here, temperature difference between there to there. And then you, you go to the next interval, where in this case, if you analyze uh, carefully, you only have two streams, where the blue stream here, having a CP of A and then the uh, I would say the red stream here having a CP of C. So you add them up together and then where you would have A plus C multiplied by a T3 minus T4 T4 where it is the basically the temperature interval between in this, in this uh, interval. And then finally you have uh, delta H4 where it only has one uh, CP value which is A multiplied by T4 minus T5. So we, once you have calculated all of those, then you're going to plot them, uh, plot the values. Um, later, I will show you what exactly uh, that I do, but later you will get something like this uh, for cold stream as well as a hot stream. But in, in that particular, for hot stream, you need to analyze hot stream uh, information. Right, next, uh, I'm gonna show you our tutorial problem. So this is our tutorial problem. Um, the first thing that you need to know is this tutorial problem is basically a uh, consists of two hot stream as well as two cold stream. And then their CP value in kilowatt per uh, degree Celsius is, uh, uh, is shown in the table uh, on your bottom uh, right. Now, as you can see here, uh, what are our key information? So we need to uh, do pitch analysis using a delta T minimum of 10 degrees Celsius. And then what are the information that we need to get is basically a pinch temperature, utility requirement, what is our cold utility as well as hot utility, and then energy recovery. So to calculate all of this, you need uh, to... Uh, calculate. You need to prepare hot and cold composite curve. Now, this uh this uh stream information are available uh on the table, but I also show you uh the grid diagram of the stream hot stream H one uh from this temperature one seventy to sixty H two is from one fifty need to be cooled down to thirty, and then uh, you have a cold stream from twenty five need to be heated up to one thirty five, and then C two is basically a uh, uh, cold stream need from uh, need to be heated up from eighty degrees Celsius to one fifty degrees Celsius. So the CP value is in the table. So now that we have. Uh, understand what is our tutorial problem, the next step is to just simply prepare a composite curve because that's basically the first thing that you need to do before you know what's your pinch temperature, utility requirement, as well as energy recovery. So let's check out how. So let's see how, uh, how do I prepare the composite curve. All right, first thing first, step one, understand your stream. Okay, uh, understand your stream, get information, uh, get all of the information, especially CP and temperature information of your hot or cold stream. But in this case, I'm going to prepare my cold stream first. Uh, as I said before, step, step one, arrange the stream based on temperature interval. So my cold stream has two stream, which is C1 as well as C2. Now, as you can see here, I have my C1 from 25 degrees Celsius need to be heated up to 135. And I also identify their CP value, which is a 2.0. The next one is basically a C2. 
uh, need to be heated up from 80 degrees Celsius and 150 degrees uh, Celsius, having a CP of 4.0. Again, at this point, I don't really care what is the, uh, the what is it called? What is the slope of this curve? I don't really care about that. You can just simply draw them uh, vertically or you can just having a very slow slope low uh, slope or having a very sharp slope slope uh, doesn't really matter in this case at this point i just interested in the temperature and cp value uh, next uh, i also do the same for the hot stream uh, but in this case hot stream will be uh, from higher temperature to a lower temperature where for the first stream i have a, a h2 need to be heated need to be cooled down from 150 to 30, having a CP value of 1.5. The second one is H1, need to be cooled down from 170 to a 60, having a CP value of a 3.0. Now that I have uh, arranged the stream based on the temperature interval, the next, th the next thing that I need to know is what is the temperature interval that I have here? Uh, how many intervals? So I have three intervals. So the first interval is from 170 to 150. So that's the first interval. The second interval is from 150 to 60. That's the second interval. Uh, and then the last uh, interval is from 60 to 30 uh, for the uh, third interval. You can also do the same thing for the cold stream, but, uh, but I think you get the idea. Okay, next you will calculate heat load for each interval. So for cold stream, it's quite easy. The equation, as I said, uh, heat flow for a particular interval is basically a CP summation of a stream in that particular interval uh, multiplied by temperature difference. So for H3, uh, basically the top, the, 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 the interval between 135 to 150, I only have one line here means, uh, means that it only have one CP value, which is four. So four multiplied by the temperature difference, uh, 150 minus 135, I get 20 kilowatt. Uh, you do the same for the second interval between 135 to 80, but in this case, I have two streams where this stream has a CP of 2 and then the other stream has CP of uh, 4. So 2 plus 4 multiplied by 135 minus 80 temperature difference in this particular interval, I will get 330. The last uh, heat flow uh, is basically at the third interval or this first interval, if you will, uh, where I only have one curve or one stream here. Right, so the CP of this stream is 2.0 multiplied with the temperature difference, which is 80 minus 25 temperature difference at that uh, particular uh, interval. So I will have a heat flow of 110. The second one is 330. The third one is a uh, 20 kilowatt. Now for the hot stream, it is also the same thing. I have. Uh, three interval between 170 plus uh, uh, to 150. The second one is 150 to 60. The third one is 60 to 30. You do the same thing, you will get a uh, heat flow of 45, 405, and 75. So now that you know that you already know what's the temperature, what's the heat flow, the next thing that we need to do is we need to prepare a uh, uh, we need to prepare a cold and hot composite curve. But again, as I said, uh, it should be drawn on a plot where the y-axis is the temperature and then the, the x-axis is the heat load. Uh, the first thing that I will do is I will plot the uh, hot composite curve first. Now, the hot composite uh, curve, uh, the value is on the right-hand side here based on our calculated value. But uh, I think the, the best way to do this is to start at the heat load of a zero. So, at, uh, so as you can see here, from 30 uh, to 60, basically the first interval, right? Um, the heat load is 45. So you plot from 30 to 30, 0, coordinate 30, 0, and then go to a 60, 100, and 60, and 45. So that's the first, I would say, segment of your composite curve. Now, the next one is the stream 
uh, belongs to the second interval between 60 to 150. And then the heat load is 405. But as you can see here, from 45, it goes all the way to uh, 400 and uh, 450. So why that? Why, why this number? So it's basically, uh, these are distance essentially. So from here, from 45 to 450, you will get 405. Okay, the difference here is 405. So obviously the, the, the what is it called? The distance, the y-axis distance, 450. So you basically 45 plus uh, 405 is 450. But the difference here is basically your, your H2. Now that's the second uh, segment of your uh, hot composite curve. The last segment is basically your H3 you need to be heated up from 150 to 175. Uh, and then since the heat load is 75, you just simply need to add 450 plus 75. That's where you get 525. Now you do the same thing for the cold uh, composite curve. But in this case, uh, just plot one sec, just draw a line, one segment, uh, two segment, three segment for the hot composite curve. Do the same thing for the cold composite curve. But in this case, uh, they will have a different value. So for the first uh, temperature of first segment, if you will, it begins at 25 degrees Celsius and then zero. Start, uh, it's, it's good for you to start at zero. Okay. Later, I will explain why. You can you can just simply put uh, wherever you want on the y-axis. Doesn't really matter, but it's good to start at zero. And then it need to be heated up from 25 to 80 based on the first interval. And then the heat load is 100 and uh, where's my cursor? 110. So the distance 110, then you will plot the second. The first plot, the first point is 25, 0. The second point or coordinate, if you will, is 80, 110. The first segment of your uh, hot uh, cold composite curve. Then you just simply continue where you, you go from uh, where the stream needs to be heated up from 80 to one, uh, 135, but the heat load is basically. 330 plus 110, so that's where you will get 440. But don't worry, the distance here is 330. So that's where that's what that is basically the relationship between whatever point here with your heat load. And then the last segment here is just from 440 to 500, where you uh 400 and and, and uh 400 and what is this? 440 plus 20. I think I made a mistake here. Uh, it should not be uh, it should not be all the way here. It should just simply stop here. But whatever. But whatever. So it's from here all the way to here, 150. Uh, this is a mistake. I'll, I'll check what's the temperature. Uh, I think it's around I think it's around 70 something. It's not 20. Definitely not 20. Uh, so yeah, you have the third segment from 440 to uh, 500. That's where you get a cold composite curve and hot composite curve. Basically, the, the, the third step. Now, the fourth step is you begin to shift the cold composite curve because you have to remember our delta T minimum is 10 degrees Celsius. We want to find the narrowest, narrowest region or narrowest, I would say, a point between cold and hot composite curve. Now, how do you shift? Since this is basically drawn, I would say manually or drawn graphically, you just simply shift the curve on y on the x axis. So as you can see, uh, the first uh, light uh, blue colored curve is the original one. Now I shift to one point such that it can like uh it can like meet at one single point. Now this at this point the delta t uh delta t is zero. I don't want that. So I keep moving, I keep shifting on the y-axis uh, until I get uh, the gap, the smallest gap uh, is 10. So as you can see in my final curve here, I have the black line here. The gap over there is 10 degrees Celsius. So uh, that's how you uh, shift the plot. Uh, I mean, you can do this uh, mathematically, if you will, using, uh, because this is a simple uh, linear, I would say, equation, you know, if you know the coordinate, you know the slope, 
should be easy to get the number as well. So it's completely up to you how you want to uh, do this. But graphically, uh, just shift the plot. You know, when you shift the plot, you don't change anything related to the shape of the plot. The shape of the plot always the same. The only thing that are, uh, that are different is just the allocation. Uh, of course, when you want to shift, the question that you need to ask yourself is how much, uh, I, would say, I would say distance, how much x axis distance do i need to shift to achieve a uh, delta t minimum of 10. now uh, that's the question so you just simply shift it until you get a smallest or narrowest region of 10. now if you have a different uh, delta t minimum let's say 5 then you have to shift maybe left a bit in this case so that you become delta t minimum of uh, 5. but in my case my delta t minimum of 10. All right, now that you have shifted uh, the plot, right? So you will get the final location or final position of your plot. So that's where you will have uh, the, 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 uh, a core composite curve having the narrowest region or having delta t minimum of 10. That's where, do, where we will put our core composite curve. And then lastly, you just do analyze your hot and cold composite curve. So the, the original one, I can simply throw it out. Uh, the one that are at delta t of zero, I don't I can simply throw it out. And any other curve that are not really important is is just you can just simply uh, delete or, or 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 erase if you will. So what really matter here is my uh hot composite curve and then my cold composite curve. Usually I will keep my composite curve uh, as it is and uh, I don't change anything but I I always change the uh, cold composite curve uh, shift the, the the cold composite curve to the right side of my uh, y uh, x axis again you can also shift your hot composite curve if you want but it will go to the negative uh, x direction there's nothing wrong with it you just need to do but when you calculate the difference right you need to deal with a negative number. So I don't want to do that. I would, I would prefer to shift mine on the positive x interval. That's why I keep my uh, x, uh, I will, I keep my hard composite curve as it is, but I only shift my cold composite curve. Okay, so, so how can I analyze this? It's quite easy. So the temperature are the same, no changes whatsoever. Uh, my cold, uh, my hot composite curve, I don't change that as well. But my cold composite curve, as uh, as we did before, we shifted such that the minimum or the narrowest region here is 10 degrees Celsius. So what are the information that we get from our shifted composite curve, if you will? The fir first thing first, uh, as you can see here, now the temperature here is 80 degrees Celsius, and then delta T minimum here is 10, right? So you have a cold pinch of 80 degrees Celsius. Now, what is my hot uh, pinch? Why is it 90 degrees Celsius? Because if my cold pinch is uh, 80, so delta T minimum of 10, so my hot pinch got to be 90, which is 80 plus 10. Or maybe, for example, if your cold stream is like uh, 76, for example, right? if my if my delta T minimum of 5, so my hot pinch is got to be 70. Uh, 6 plus 5, so 81. So it's still, it's still like that. But if there's an example, you know information about a uh, hot uh, pinch, right? If if your hot pinch is, for example, 96, right? And then your delta T minimum of 10. So if you know the cold hot pinch, if you know delta T minimum, you will get a cold pinch as well. Basically, 86. 96 minus, uh, 96 minus uh, a 10. That's the first uh, information that you get. Now, what are the other information that you will get? The other information that we will get is the coal utility. As you can see here, I draw a vertical line where uh, that, that, that intersect the end point, that, that touches the end point of my shifted uh, blue curve. Basically, it is a region where I only have one line, one, one hot stream. And then the distance here from 0 to 66, so 66 minus 0, you will get a utility requirement of 66 kilowatt. What does it mean is uh, in order for you to cool this particular uh, stream in this particular region, 
uh, you need to use uh, your utility, maybe cooling water or, or, or refrigerant or whatever you have, but the amount is 66 a kilowatt. That's one thing. And then if you go to the other extreme, uh, you also will have one line here. Now, this particular line is basically a, a, a cold stream that needs to be heated up using a hot utility because I don't have any other stream to be heat exchange with. Now, in this case, how much do I need? It's basically the difference between uh, 568, a new, I would say a new, a new coordinate because I already shift by 66 uh, degrees Celsius. If you remember, this particular uh, point is begin at zero, right? So if I shift by 66, the entire thing will be shifted by 66, as simple as that. Now, this new point, 568 minus whatever point here, where basically, Basically, it is a region where it, I only have one stream, one course, one stream, one line. So 568 minus 525. So I will get 43 kilowatt of uh, energy required to heat up this particular stream from 100. I don't know what's the temperature here. Using a hot utility, either medium pressure steam, high pressure steam, or maybe uh, hot oil or coal fired heater, whatever, you know, it's, it's, it is a utility. Now, what are our energy recovery? How do I get 459? It is basically a region where I have two lines, two streams. So the hot stream and then the cold stream. In this region, I have two lines, right? So what are the value? The, the end point is 525 and then the, 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 the another value is, is 66. So 525 minus 66, I get 459 a kilowatt. So to summarize, what do I have from the, what do I, what information do, do I get from the hot and cold deposit curve? It's just, you know, uh, your, you will get your hot pinch, cold pinch, energy recovery, utility usage, uh, hot and cold, as well as, uh, you know, a drawing of your hot and cold deposit curve in the TH uh, uh, diagram. All right, uh, that will be all for me. I hope you like the videos. Uh, again, uh, if I said anything wrong, please let me know in the comment section. I will try to do to upload a video on the Aspen Energy Analyzer maybe next week. I already prepared the material. It's just that I won't have any time to clip, uh, to sort of like uh, to do the video. So I decided to do this video is because it might be this is much easier, I guess, to 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 explain. Alright, um, I will see you guys uh, in the next video, alright? Bye-bye and have a nice day.